In this particular case, he was able to linger on this plane for nearly a half an hour. No one questioned, no one even noticed. He had so much time, he actually left the airplane to get another video camera. We asked Carlos Muzio, general manager of Varig Airlines in North America, to look at our undercover videotape. What does this video say to you about the security? There's no security at all. Should a baggage handler have that kind of access? Not at all. That's showing again the big hole, the big Swiss cheese that uh, Atlanta International Airport is. The big Swiss cheese. The Swiss cheese. Our producer also had unlimited access to the exterior of the plane. He was careful not to interfere with the aircraft, but watch him take his beeper, a small plastic device with a battery, and put it near the landing gear well. This in an effort to demonstrate how easily he could hide it there. Apparently, there was no surveillance system in place to monitor this very suspicious activity, because they surely would have stopped him from doing this. What does Ogden have to say about hiring our producer without a background check? and his ability to wander through secure areas for two weeks at two different airports. After we started asking questions, Ogden turned itself in to the Atlanta Aviation Department. Ogden officials refused an on-camera interview, but said in a letter, in situations where Ogden becomes aware of potential non-compliance, management is quick to investigate and remedy the situation. In all instances, Ogden alerts the appropriate authorities. Angela Gittens is the general manager of aviation at the Atlanta Hartsfield Airport. Does it worry you that somebody was able to get a job with absolutely no reference checks and was able to have access to Oh, absolutely. Airplane? I mean, that's why uh, we have revoked that company's privileges. Now the aviation department is itself examining the background checks of all Ogden employees at the Atlanta airport. And because of what Dateline found, certain Ogden workers can no longer work without supervision. So now when one of these Ogden employees needs to get in one of these secure areas, somebody has to escort them? That's right. In each and every case? That's right. You may be wondering just who is responsible for protecting airports and airplanes. It turns out a lot of people are. The FAA makes the rules and has the power to punish those who break them. Airport authorities oversee some operations locally. But the security of the airplane at the gate is up to the airlines, which hire companies to do the job for them. Coincidentally, in both Newark and Atlanta, Dateline producers worked at Delta terminals. Delta refused Dateline's repeated requests for an on-camera interview, but told us in a letter, overall responsibility for airport security falls under the jurisdiction of the FAA. Delta also said it's investigating the security breaches we found. But Varig Airlines was eager to talk to us. What worries you most about what you saw here? That someone's got ac access to my property in which I'm paying for all security possible and complying with all the security that I've set forth by the FAA, and suddenly they can, anyone can go inside an aircraft. Did you feel violated when you saw this? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> You know, because it's, uh, first of all, it's, it's like someone robbing your house. At Newark Airport, where a Dateline producer also roamed freely on airplanes, we tried to talk to the Port Authority, which oversees operations there. They refused an on-camera interview. How does the FAA respond to all of this? Carl Hull Flynn is the agency's associate administrator for security. This particular producer was also able to gain access to airplanes the cockpit, the cabin area. He basically had unlimited access. Is that appropriate? Absolutely not. It's, uh, it's more than inappropriate. It is negligent. It is intolerable. And we will not tolerate it. We will take strong action against the people involved. At first, Brian Jenkins was concerned about us broadcasting our videotape. But Jenkins, who spent a career studying terrorism, told us he now plans to show our broadcast to the Vice President's Commission on Aviation Safety and Security. We hope that by the broadcast of this, that that, in effect, is sufficiently tragic on its own merits that people would say, that is not acceptable. The system has to be made better. We know it has to be done. Let's make sure it gets done. 
Brian Jenkins tells us one reason the Gore Commission was able to issue its recommendations so quickly following the crash of TWA Flight 800 this summer was because, in fact, many of the same suggestions had been made by an earlier commission, the one that convened eight years ago following the bombing of Pan Am 103. We'll be continuing our investigation of airport security in the weeks ahead, and we'll bring you the results on a future dateline. Now here's Tom Gore.